Cross contamination prevention, aftercare part two on Body Piercing Basics, episode number 50. So stick around. Hello, my name is Dave. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you as a level of expertise. These are the aftercare instructions that I do give out to my clientele. There's a little bit more in depth than say what I would do in a normal case, but the idea is to give you as much information as possible. What we're going to talk about today is the things you shouldn't do. And the first one, we covered what you should do. And as I mentioned in the first one, if you haven't watched that already, if you feel like you've contaminated the area, you do want to clean off the area with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap as soon as possible to fight off the possibility of getting infection. So when we're talking about cross-contamination prevention, why is that so important? The piercing, as it goes through that first stage of healing, um, where it's an open wound, it is a pathway into the body, meaning any contact with uh, contaminants, whether they're microorganism or dirt, debris, or simple things like that, or fungi, can enter into that piercing and cause an infection. If that does happen, it may require medical attention. So... It's best to practice these until you know that the piercing is completely healed, meaning it is finished that first stage of healing where it is no longer an open wound. Piercings heal from the outside inward, slowly growing tissue until it connects in the center. So even though the holes may look like they're kind of healed, it may not be discharging anymore, it doesn't necessarily mean that the piercing is completely healed. When the piercing heals completely, it'll stop producing discharge and the holes on the edges will kind of round uh, inward and kind of pull inward as that tissue connects in the center. Um, also, the jewelry will be much more easily moved through the, through the piercing without any effort or force. Whenever in doubt of whether or not your piercing's healed or not, go see your piercer. Have them take a look at it. Let them make that decision for you. Uh, they're happy to do that. They'd much rather have you do that than have you stop taking care of it, get an infection or other problem, and then they have to deal with that. Plus, you know, nobody wants to make anybody go through that unless they absolutely have to. So cross-contamination prevention, what I like to call things your mom should have taught you, or your dad, or some significant adult in your development as a child. First one is, is... Always wash your hands for handling the jewelry. Always handle it by the ends or the furthest area away from the piercing or whatever's never going to come in contact with the piercing. Limit your contact to only when you're doing soaks or compresses. The rest of the time, leave it alone. Do not play with it. Do not twist it. Do not move it. Leave it alone. Keep everybody else's germy little fingers away from it. Understand that microorganisms like bacteria and other pathogens do move on the surface of your skin. So if you have your nostril pierce, anytime you touch this area, it's a good idea to wash your hands before you do so. At some point in your life, you might have been told to spin, rotate, move jewelry, or those are going to become permanently affixed to your body. And you're never able to remove it. That isn't the case. In fact, constantly moving and adjusting and rotating and spinning jewelry is just going to increase your likelihood of infection by overhandling the jewelry and possibly dragging contaminants into the piercing. The other problem is it can break loose new skin growth, which then will prolong your healing period. So do not move the jewelry. Jewelry likes to be isolated. Uh, piercings like to be isolated. Leave it alone. No oral contact or exchange of bodily fluids on near around the piercing until it is healed. With genital piercings, I generally suggest making that at least six months. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't have sex for six months. That just means you need to use some type of latex barrier. With other piercings, it does also include your own saliva, of course, except with oral piercings. I've never understood why people think it's safe to lick their fingers and clean things, but don't do that. It's disgusting, and your saliva is full of bacteria. Keep your environment clean. Clothing, bedding, towels, anything that may come in contact with the piercing. 
a couple of different ways to get around constantly changing your sheets or your pillowcase every day. If it's below the neck, putting on clean clothes before you go to bed is a good idea. If it's above the neck, uh, taking an old, soft, comfortable t-shirt that you know is clean, put it over your pillow, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side, turn it inside out, sleep on one side, sleep on the other side. The other advantage to it is sometimes piercings bleed a little bit the first night or two, so it cuts down the likelihood of staining the pillow in the pillowcase. Keep pets away from the piercing. Do not let them sleep in the bed with you. They're going to take everything they came in contact with for the entire day and smear it all over those clean sheets. Also, cats and smaller dogs like to sleep next to your face. And if you have an ear piercing or something on your face, they're probably going to want to lick it or bite it or have some form of contact. And if you're really wondering about that, Think about some of the things that you've watched your pet lick. Do not submerge the piercing in bodies of water you can't control the quality of. This is one of the most common questions I get. Can I swim? Can I swim? Can I swim? No, you can't. No, you can't swim with a healing piercing. I don't care what water it's in. It is not safe. Even with treated pools, uh, which use a filtration system, there are microorganisms that can pass through that filter uh, in could, in theory, enter your body and cause an infection. You add to that, especially with public pools or pools that are open to a lot of people, and you have a lot of people entering that water that haven't bathed, haven't cleaned themselves, may have die. Uh, kids with them with swimming diapers on, and you get a whole fecal batter and everything else and a whole nice little Petri dish for all those chemicals to kind of stick around in. Most of the treatment for pool is designed to keep the pool water looking clean in reducing some pathogens. It is not a clear 100% thing. Natural waters. The cleaner the water is, the clearer the water is, the more healthy that ecosystem is. Meaning, there's millions of microorganisms in there or it wouldn't be healthy. So no, you cannot swim. Hot tubs, that's just asking for problems because you have a situation where the jets collect in deposit water that warms up, creates a slice, warm, moist place for all kinds of things to grow, survive, and live the good life until they enter into your body and cause an infection. Now you may be asking, Devo, when is it safe to put my piercing underwater? In your own clean and well-maintained bathtub. The rest of the time, no. Uh-uh, don't do it. You're just asking for problems. With ear piercings, you also want to be cautious if you're using anything that comes out of a spray can or squirt bottle in your hair. Shield it with a folded up paper towel. Same thing with facial piercings. Um, if you go see a beautician, make sure that they do the same thing and make them fully aware, hey, there's this healing piercing here. Please stay away from it. With nostril piercings, you also want to avoid contact with cosmetics, especially powder base or foundation makeups until it is completely healed. Now, other piercings have additional needs like oral piercings, genital piercings. Everyone's a little bit different. So it's always important that not only do you talk to your piercer and have them explain how to take care of it and ask them to verbally explain it to you, but that they give you some kind of sheet with information on how to take care of it. And if you'd like to get a copy of this, you can download it directly from our website. Link in the description. Well, I hope that covers cross-contamination today. Uh, we're going to move on to abuse in babying the piercing and a bunch of other stuff next week. If you feel like I missed something, which is very possible, yeah, I say this a lot and I say it over and over again, uh, please leave a comment. Uh, if you have a question or I brought up a question and you're a little unsure why I would suggest that, please leave a comment. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up because if you don't, you know, every time you don't like a video, a puppy cries. And nothing sadder than a crying puppy. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell so that you get notified each and every time we post one of these videos. We uh, we post roughly four to five videos a week. We have a focus on education about body piercing, tattooing, and other body arts. 
If you would like to purchase some fashionable uh, t-shirts and etc., check out our merch store. A link is in the description. And until next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Man, it has been really nice the last couple days. Go out there, enjoy it, do something fun, and uh, take care of one another. That's your assignment for the day.